Radio frequency ablation is a way in which heat is used to treat things in a patient's body. In the case of varicose veins, we use radio frequency ablation by popping a tube or a catheter into the vein in question and passing it up to the top of where the vein isn't working properly. Then after applying local anaesthetic so that the patient is comfortable during the procedure, we heat up the inside of the vein and this destroys the vein and therefore no longer works and causes a problem in terms of problems with varicose veins for the patient. It's a very simple procedure in the sense that the patient can walk in and walk out of the room uh, and go back to more or less almost all of their normal activities after the treatment. And it takes around half an hour, 40 minutes to uh, carry out. Uh, and it's about as uncomfortable as having a few blood tests in your leg. So using radiofrequency ablation uh, to treat varicose veins, it's a very low risk procedure. Obviously, any form of surgery or treatment, there are always some risks for the patient. But in terms of using radiofrequency ablation, we use an ultrasound machine to correctly identify the veins that we want to treat. And we're able to confirm that the catheter is in exactly the right place using the ultrasound machine, thereby minimizing the risk of any problems when the treatment is performed. After the treatment is performed, we ask the patient to get up and walk and move around and keep doing this for a number of weeks after the treatment. And the reason we do this is to bring down the risk of a, a clot in an important vein, something called a, a deep vein thrombosis. And I suppose this is really the major risk around treating varicose veins. And this risk is really brought to an, down to an absolute minimum by asking the patient to walk around. Uh, the other thing we ask patients to do is not to fly, particularly long haul, for between four and six weeks after treatment. In terms of the actual figures, the risk of getting a DVT or a blockage in an important vein is probably something in the order of one in 500, one in a thousand for every patient that we treat. But the risks really are brought down and massively by walking around and avoiding long haul flight. And even if a patient does get the uh, DVT, uh, the risk of it developing into a significant problem for the patient is very minimal. Radiofrequency ablation is, is a keyhole or minimally invasive treatment. Uh, so the wounds or the scars on the patient are very small uh, and uh, the patient uh, after the treatment can get up and walk uh, and get back to their normal activities. We would advise that the patient doesn't drive uh, on the day of treatment and this is really not particularly surrounding the fact that they've had radiofrequency ablation but the fact they've had a procedure and the fact they've had some local anaesthetic. But other than that, uh, we recommend that the patient can get back to their normal activities uh, more or less straight away. We do advise that they avoid uh, vigorous exercise. And as previously mentioned, we also do advise that uh, the patient uh, does keep active. Um, but other than that, uh, in terms of recovering from the treatment, most of our patients don't even take paracetamol. And we found that around 90% of patients uh, don't even need simple analgesia after the treatment. Patients will need to wear a compression stocking uh, for a period of time afterwards, uh, sometimes between two and four weeks. But other than that, uh, they should find uh, that the symptoms will settle down in terms of slight discomfort after the procedure. They may notice a, a lumpy hard vein in their thigh or in their calf. And this is normal, this is a good sign. This means that the treatment has worked. We do advise patients that whilst most of the time they will tell us at a month when we see them, that this will have improved. It can take a little bit longer, sometimes up to six or 12 months uh, for this to settle down completely. You can pretty much get back to all normal activities uh, more or less straight after treatment. We do advise that you don't drive away from the treatment and this is really largely around uh, the treatment itself in terms of having had some local anaesthetic rather than having had radiofrequency ablation specifically. And we're very keen that you continue to exercise and keep walking, uh, keep, keep regularly uh, walking um, and performing other um, low cardiovascular exercise as this really brings down the risk of a, a DVT to an absolute minimum. You will need to wear a compression stocking uh, and you can uh, shower with that in place. You can also swim if you want to with that in place too.
we've discovered that uh, it's uh, around 95-96% effective in immediate treatment of the varicose veins. So what that means is that uh, 95 or 96 percent of the time the treated vein is blocked uh, as we intend at the time of treatment. Of course we're interested as to how long this works for and follow-up data does suggest that over 90 percent of the time the vein remains blocked and therefore this is a very effective treatment. In comparison this compares very effectively to uh, other forms of treatment such as laser or conventional surgery and radiofeeds replacement is said to be less uh, painful than laser and certainly has a lower risk of complications compared to uh, conventional surgery so-called uh, varicose vein stripping. So varicose veins can come back uh, my experience is that very rarely does the varicose vein that's been treated come back but it is possible that the patient can develop further varicose veins as we haven't changed the reason why a human being would get varicose veins and this is largely related to the fact that we stand and therefore the effect of gravity on, on the pressure in the blood in the veins in the legs uh, causes them to become varicose. 